Okay, so I just got finished reading this article about R. Kelly. And I don't know why after reading this article, I got such a ominous feeling. And something is telling me that R. Kelly may not be among us too much longer. There's something brewing that's really serious. Well, the story is about, um, apparently he has two mansions here in the Atlanta area. And um, I've seen a picture of one of them, and it's just a huge mansion. And why he's renting two of them? I mean, a mansion, you rent a mansion, it could be like $10,000, $20,000 a month. And I think his main residence is in Chicago. And it's like, this is just excessive. I need to speak to a multimillionaire and figure out what is the sense of renting out mansions that you don't live in. You know, you can only live in one house at a time. It just doesn't make sense to me. But whatever. But anyway, the article is about, uh, I think the name is Alfonso Wade. And when I read the name, I instinctively knew, or it just seemed, the name sounded familiar to me. And I think this person had been with R. Kelly since the 90s, working for him. And apparently something went down between them where Alfonso felt that R. Kelly owed him money. So in November, this man went to both mansions over a course of several days and nights. And neighbors said trucks and cars of so much activity pulling up to the mansion day and night coming and going and he sold everything in the mansions and he was selling you know furniture and everything by the room like you know this whole room was sell for six thousand dollars um he even sold a diamond encrusted hooded jacket of r kelly i mean everything out of these two mansions he sold um, I don't know why this feels like a foreshadow of a tragic event. And it's almost like um, when I was watching television in April of 2009... And I watched a press conference with Michael Jackson. And he's standing up there announcing his This Is It tour. And he kept saying, this is it. Final show. No more. This is it. This is it. And I spoke out to him in the TV and I said, are you going to die soon? And not even two months later, Michael Jackson was dead. So I'm getting the same ominous feeling with this story. That there's some stuff brewing around R. Kelly with his haters. And when I say haters, I don't mean these haters are people who are just jealous of his success and jealous of all these bitches he keeps. They're not those type of haters. Those are haters that R. Kelly did some fuck nigga shit to. I think he's been fucking over too many people for too long. Um, Hey, this could come from one of the bitches in the stables, one of them might just 
go bonkers. I mean, I've seen that happen a couple of times with one particular celebrity. This place I used to work. Major, major celebrity. I'm not going to say the name. But I just find it interesting. When white men have a stable of bitches, white men like Hugh Hefner, you know, they are revered someone to be admired it's okay but when a black man does the same shit like Hugh Hefner it's a fucking problem I don't know why but anyway this particular celebrity would have a stable of bitches and two times that I know of two different bitches in his stable had a psychotic break and went bonkers over him and ended up where I worked And when they would go bonkers, I've only met two of them. My co-workers at the time told me it it has happened at least five times. But when a bitch in his stable goes bonkers, he sends them where I used to work. And it would cost, treatment would cost like $30,000 a month. He would pay for their treatment, show up in a limousine on visiting day and visit with the bonkered bitch. I mean... This is what he would do. And they'd be in treatment like three to six months. And they would go bonkers because they would demand that he would stop seeing all the other bitches, kick all the other bitches out the stable and be stableless. And they just wanted to be his wife. And he'd be like, no, I'm a playboy. I ain't trying to get married. And they would lose their fucking mind and end up in a mental hospital. True story. I'm dead serious. So, um, being that black folks, as I said in a recent video, don't believe in treatment and therapy and seeing psychologists and all of that, when a bitch is going bonkers in R. Kelly's stable of bitches, nobody, R. Kelly ain't going to have the wherewithal or any sense to say, well, let me put this bitch in the treatment like the white you know, celebrity does. They're just going to ignore it. The other bitches in the stable are just going to enable the bonkered bitch until she goes completely bonkers and R. Kelly ends up dead. That's a scenario. But as far as I can feel and as far as I can see, something is coming down the pike that ain't good for that man. And I think he's been a fuck nigga for a long, 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 long time. I mean, have we forgotten that situation between him and Jay-Z? When they collabed on that album, that I think the best, of, the best of both worlds. Some shit went down. Everybody disses uh, R. Kelly for some reason. He's, I mean, he is respected and admired by his fans, but people who really deal with him are intimate with him and I don't mean not necessarily sexually but you know had a working relationship with him I don't know it just seems like a lot of people just think he's a fuck nigga because he do fuck nigga shit I don't know but I'm gonna stay tuned to this situation and I just hope I'm not going to come back on another video talk about I told you I don't want to have to say I told you but yeah it's just too much drama and shit swirling around him too much fuck nigga bullshit It's going to come to an end. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Peace.